Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, it's all about apt. Apt is a package manager, and it's pretty popular. Reason being, it's the package manager of choice for two very popular distributions, Debian and Ubuntu, as well as other distributions that are based on Debian and Ubuntu. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a primer on apt. Let's go ahead and get started. As you can see right here, I have one Linode instance on my account. This one in particular is for Ubuntu. And that actually brings me to the first thing that I would like to mention, which is the apt tool is available for both Debian and Ubuntu. So your instance will need to be using one or the other in order for you to have access to the apt command. On my end, I'm already connected to that Linode via SSH. So let's see some examples of the apt command. Now there's several variations of the apt command that I'm going to show you in this video, and the first of which will allow you to update your index. So you could kind of think of apt as almost like an app store, but it's used for packages in general, not just apps. But in order to download a package, it has to know which packages are actually available. So if you update your index, it's going to check the repositories. Repositories are where the packages come from. And it's going to synchronize a list of available packages so that way, it'll have up-to-date knowledge about which packages are available. And to do that, we could run apt update. Now, a couple of things first. As you can see right here, I am currently logged in as root. If you're using a standard user, and technically you should be, then you'll probably need to use sudo in front of the command like this. But I'm going to omit that because root can do everything. Root doesn't need sudo. But if you're using a standard user on your end, just make sure that you include sudo as necessary so that way you avoid any permissions errors. Now another thing that I want to mention is that you'll often see the apt command written like this. apt hyphen git. And that's perfectly valid, but you don't actually need to include the hyphen git anymore. In the past, that was the only way to use it, but nowadays, the command has been simplified down to apt. Every supported version of Debian and Ubuntu nowadays will support the simplified version like you see here, so even though a lot of how-tos out there will show apt-git, you only need to actually type apt, like this. Anyway, I'll press enter. And as the text scrolls by, you can see the URLs that it's reaching out to to download index information from. It usually takes less than a minute for this to go through, and then it'll be finished. And as you can see, the process is done. And it even shows us how many packages have updates available. We'll get to that later. But at this point, we've updated the index, so we should be all set to continue. So next, let's take a look at an example of installing a package that isn't already available on the system. So what I'm going to do is run apt install, and then for fun, I'll just install midnight commander, or MC for short. I'll press enter. Now, it's letting us know right here that these three additional packages will be installed. And the reason why that's the case is because apt is smart enough to know that if there's prerequisites for any packages, it'll go ahead and take care of that for you. It'll make sure that those dependencies are installed as a part of the command. So that way you won't have to type apt install mc and then these three packages in addition. So basically apt handles all dependency resolution for us, which is pretty cool. Now in this section we have some suggested packages, but we're not going to install those, and those packages aren't actually being installed right now. Those are just additional packages that have some relation to the package we're asking for. So if for some reason we need any of the functionality that's included in those packages, we can have this little reminder right here that'll let us know that we can install those to get that extra benefit. And right here, it's letting us know which packages are going to be installed in total. So here we have four packages, the MC package that we asked for originally, plus the three dependencies, just like you see. And right here, it's letting us know, again, that there's 32 packages that are available for upgrades, but we're not installing those just yet. It's just yet another reminder. So to continue, I could type Y and then press Enter, and that'll go ahead and confirm the changes. But since Y is capital, I don't actually need to type Y. I could simply press Enter, and that'll confirm it. And there we go. The MC command should now be available because we successfully installed the package. So I typed which and then mc to confirm that it is available. You can use which to confirm that a binary is available on the system, and if it is, it'll tell you where that binary is actually located. 
So I could run MC just like that. And it's a little oversized because of my font size, but essentially it's a file manager right here in your terminal. I'll leave it up to you to explore MC, which stands for Midnight Commander. It's a really cool utility. But anyway, I'll just press F10 to quit out, and that takes me back to the command line. Now, if for some reason you need to reinstall a package, apt has you covered on that as well. It's probably rare that you would ever need to do this, but you never know. And to do that, you can run apt, and then instead of install, we could type reinstall, and then the name of the package, just like that. So as you can see, it reinstalled the package, so the apt reinstall command is pretty self-explanatory. So if ever you need to reinstall a package in the future, you now know how to do that. If you want to remove a package, that's pretty easy as well. And for that, we could simply type apt remove and then the package that we want to remove. So in my case, apt remove mc. So I'll press enter. Now up here at the top, it's letting me know that when I originally installed the package that I'm now trying to remove, it installed some packages as dependencies, specifically these three right here. We'll come back to that later. But what we can glean right now is that it's only going to remove one package, specifically this one, so it's doing exactly what we asked it to do, no more no less. So I'll press enter to confirm the changes. And now the process is finished, so if I type which and then MC, I get no output at all, which means that the MC command is no longer available. Which makes sense, I did in fact remove that package. So when we removed MC, we saw some verbiage that was telling us that there were some packages that were installed as dependencies that are no longer needed. Now to handle this situation, we have a very specific command that we can use. And that command is apt auto remove. Now what it wants to do is remove these three packages right here. As you'll recall, when we installed MC originally, it installed these three packages as dependencies. So when you run apt remove, it's not actually going to remove the dependencies themselves, it'll just simply remove the package that you're asking it to remove, no more no less. But what the apt auto remove command will do is give you a chance to remove any packages on your system that were installed as dependencies that are no longer needed. So you might see many more packages here than what I have, but I know that I don't need these packages anymore, so I'm good to remove them, so I'll just press enter. And that takes care of that. Every now and then, it's going to be a good idea to just go through your server, run apt auto remove, and clean up any packages that are no longer needed. So essentially, that allows you to prune your packages, and that's a good thing to do every so often. Now earlier in the video, we saw some output that was telling us that there were some packages available for upgrade. Let's go ahead and take care of that now. The first thing that we need to do is run apt update. As I mentioned earlier, that's going to update the index of available packages. Now I don't actually have to do that right now because, well, I did that just a few minutes ago. But if you're updating packages on your server, you should run that command first just to make sure that it's fully synchronized before you begin updating. Now after you do that, we could change the update keyword to upgrade, just like this. And what that command is going to do is give us a chance to upgrade the packages on our system. So I'll press enter. And here it's giving us some information about the packages that are going to be upgraded. So all of these right here are packages that are currently installed on the system, but will be upgraded. And we also get a summary down here as well. So apt is telling us what it wants to do. And if we agree, we could simply press enter because, well, Y is capital. So that's the default. And I'm good with the changes, so I'll press enter. At this point, it's downloading all the packages from the repositories. This could be a very quick process, or it could take some time depending on how many packages you have available for upgrade. And it's going by pretty quickly on my end. At this point, all the upgradable packages have been downloaded, so now they're being unpacked. And now we see that it's setting up packages. The verbiage setting up is on the left side near the bottom. So the setting up process is essentially the packages being actually installed on the server. Now from time to time when you upgrade packages, you might see a prompt like this that's asking you what you want to do about a file conflict. 
in this case, is telling me that the SSH config file has been modified locally, and the version of that file that's contained within the package is different. Now what you do about this is completely up to you. In your case, if you did actually make changes to that file that you want to retain, then you could choose the option keep the local version currently installed. That's what I'm going to choose. If you don't have a preference, you could choose the option right here where it says install the package maintainer's version. But I'm going to leave the default, I'll press enter on that. And there we go, the process is now complete. At this point, I recommend that you reboot the server, and that'll ensure that the updated packages are in effect. Many of the packages that were upgraded will have security updates inside them, so it's a good idea to take advantage of those security updates. So you can run sudo reboot on your end to reboot the server. If you're like me and you're running as root, you don't need sudo, but rebooting the server is a good idea. You can also reboot the server via the dashboard as well. We have a reboot option right here. I'm not going to click on it because in my case, this is just a demo server. There's nothing important that's actually being run on the server at this time. So there's a few more examples that I want to give you guys before I close the video. And the first of those is the apt search command. Earlier in the video, what I did was I ran apt install and then I installed the MC package. But you might not actually know by heart what a package name actually is. So often you'll need to search for it. So what I'm going to do is search for a package right now. So let's say, for example, that you want to install Apache. So perhaps you might do this. And that seems logical to me. I'll press enter, but there is no package that's named Apache. So I want to install Apache, but if I don't know the package name ahead of time, what do I do? So like I mentioned, we'll use apt search. We'll give it a keyword, something that we want to search for that will hopefully identify the package that we're looking for. And there's quite a few packages that are related in some way to Apache, which is why we have so many in the results here. So if we scroll up to the top, let's see if we can find out the name of the package for Apache so we can get that on the server. And here we have the actual package name. It's called Apache 2. And that's something that you might not have known if you didn't search for it. So now we know what package we need to install in order to get Apache on the server. So I can simply run apt install and then Apache 2, just like that. I'll press enter. And now Apache is installed. And to prove it, I'll copy the IP address of this Linode instance, and I'll paste the IP address right here. And here we see the default page for Apache. That confirms that it's working. Now another variation that I want to show you guys is the apt show command. And what I'll do is give it a package name that I want to show information about. And I'll again use MC as an example. And we can see quite a bit of information about this particular package. We can see a list of packages that it depends on. We can also see some packages that are recommended for installation. We could also see who is actually maintaining this package. That way, if we actually notice a bug or some kind of problem, we know who's actually responsible for maintaining that particular package. And the apt show command, as you can see, is definitely useful because, well, it gives you all kinds of information about available packages. And you know what? There's other examples of the apt command on the article that matches this particular video. So go ahead and check out that article for even more examples. So as you can see, the apt command is very easy to use, and the examples that I gave you should be more than enough to get you started with this package manager. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.